Do you think that to non-photographers, photographers seem absolutely crazy? I think without context, if I just saw somebody standing on a hill for hours in the dark <laughs> with like a little light on them, rambling about nothing, yeah, I think they were pretty crazy. Seriously surreal. The fog has such a beautiful texture right now. There's really beautiful fog waves beyond the bridge and the city. It's amazing. And actually, I can see the Milky Way right now. Ooh. So for my first shot of the evening, I decided to set up a classic view of the Golden Gate Bridge with the fog pouring through both towers. And here's what I shot. Now I've captured fog at the Golden Gate Bridge for many years. And there was something quite special about this evening. I don't know if it was just the coyotes howling at me that made it feel so wild, or if it was those beautiful cloud textures that you could see in the sky. There's something very whimsical, almost fantasy-like about those strange cloud patterns. I took multiple exposures here to get different patterns of fog and also to get variations of light trails down there on the road. It was pretty late at night, so I was quite lucky to actually get cars on that road. I loved the color contrast here between those warm tones in the fog and those bluish cooler tones in the sky. And overall, this was just a perfect image to start my evening shoot. So I actually tried something interesting a few minutes ago. I tried actually getting a panorama of the Milky Way with uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. I have no clue if it's gonna work, but I basically was doing horizontal shots and I did two rows of horizontal shots, probably about, I wanna say four or five um, for each row. So I, I would say the, the total image is like, the total panorama would be 10 exposures. Um, really interesting though. I just. I wanted to see if the image was even possible. <laughs> so while I was shooting that Milky Way panorama, I was pretty uncertain if it was even gonna stitch or if it was gonna look interesting. But to my surprise, it came out pretty nice. Now, from a compositional standpoint, this certainly isn't the most creative image that I've ever come up with. And I think to a certain level, my appreciation for this image comes from the novelty of being able to see the Milky Way, panning over to the left to see the Golden Gate Bridge, and thinking back to the memory of standing there and witnessing all of this and hearing the foghorn and hearing the coyotes. There's something about the memories that stuck out here. So this image ended up being very special to me, but for very different reasons than some of my other fine art landscape photography. After taking this panorama, I decided to shift my focus over to just the Milky Way and the foggy hill, and here's what I shot. So I didn't have a star tracker with me because frankly, when I went on this adventure, I didn't really anticipate being able to shoot the Milky Way. This was a complete spontaneous event. I love how vivid the Milky Way ended up here with a little bit of processing. I was just so surprised that I was able to pull this kind of detail from the galactic core while literally standing across the bridge from the city of San Francisco. Wow, that looks very ethereal right now with the fog pouring over. 
crazy. And foggy lens. It's a good name for a photographer, like an alias. The foggy lens. Like if a photographer was a superhero. If I was a superhero, that, that would be my name. Michael Shane Bloom, the foggy lens. We are right at the edge of the fog. It's like a thin layer of diffusion in front of the scene right now. It's like somebody added way too much Orton glow. So uh, I'm gonna try a time lapse of this, why not? I'm gonna do one second intervals here. Um, ISO 800 F4 shutter speed, bump it down to about half a second, should look great. I'm gonna do about 350 frames. I don't think I need a super long time lapse of this. Well, of course, right when I pack up and I think the night is over and I think the bridge is gone forever, the uh, North Tower of the Golden Gate Bridge came out a little bit again. So I, uh, I just shot a time lapse just now. I did one second intervals of just the North Tower and then this beautiful fog waterfall pouring through and making these little fog waves. It was really cool. And now I'm just playing around a little bit with some 70 millimeter shots and some 200 millimeter shots of the bridge. absolutely love how this long exposure came out. And I think what I enjoy so much about this one is the simplicity created here and the color contrasts between that warm strip of fog going over the Golden Gate Bridge and the cooler tones in the background fog and the foreground fog. After capturing this image, I decided to reframe, zoom out a little bit to see more of the fog pouring towards the bottom of the image. Here's the pulled back image where you can see that fog pouring through down towards the lights of the Golden Gate Bridge at the bottom of the image. And you can see those fog clouds down towards the bottom right that almost look like the mist of a waterfall. I enjoy both versions of these images quite a bit, but I would love to know your thoughts here. Which one of these frames do you enjoy more? Do you like this image that shows a little bit more of that bottom section? Or do you prefer the slightly more minimalist scene that completely takes out the bottom part of the frame? Please let me know in the comments. Here's one more scene that I captured earlier in the evening from Kirby Cove. A very simple minimalist scene, but from a completely different angle of the Golden Gate Bridge. I shot this image at 200 millimeters, zoomed in from quite a far distance, and it's a 15 second exposure. After I shot this one image, the fog completely engulfed the scene and the Golden Gate Bridge disappeared. I think what made this evening so special is I had absolutely no idea I would even end up on this hill at night. I mean, my initial reason for going to the Marin Headlands was just to go catch sunset with my good friend Joe down at the beach that evening. But the fog rushed in, completely changed my plans, and instead of just saying, oh, well, I'll go home, I shifted my attention to something completely different, changed the trip, and went with the flow. And by going with the flow, I was able to create some images that I never even thought were possible. So certainly, if you have the ability to do so, I would always encourage you to keep that in mind. It's okay to have a plan for a shoot. It's okay to have your set images and your set goals. But don't be afraid to change those plans 
if the weather is giving you something different because you really never know what you might end up capturing in the end. <gasps> I, uh, I saw some really cool stuff, and I'm very uncertain if I got good images of any of the things that I saw. <laughs> but uh, as always, I really appreciate you watching the video. I'm going to start making my way down the mountain. It is getting a little cold, it's getting a little late, and uh, I'm getting so hungry. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel because I'll be releasing a bunch of new videos in the future. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me out a lot. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.